Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Major General Christopher Beck, the Commanding General of the Maneuver Support Center of Excellence in Fort Leonard Wood. Along with me today is my Command Sergeant Major Jorge Arzabala, and also Special Agent John McCabe, who is a Special Agent in Charge of the Army's Criminal Investigation Division, Mid-Central Field Office. Last week, the tragic loss of Sergeant Sarah Roque devastated our entire community. The team at Fort Leonard Wood continues to mourn, and our thoughts and prayers to continue to be with Sarah's family, friends, and fellow soldiers. Yesterday, the unit held a memorial service to remember and honor the proud and brave soldier Sarah was, and we appreciate the community's support to the unit and to her family during this difficult time. Our focus at this time remains caring for and providing available resources to Sarah's family and her unit, providing all feasible assistance to a thorough investigation into this crime and transparency in communicating to our team, to all who knew and loved Sarah, and to the public. After Sarah was reported missing on October 21st, her unit and the installation initiated an immediate search, notified all law enforcement agencies across the nation, and asked for the public's help. Sadly, the outcome of our efforts was one that no family, unit, or community should endure. Since finding Sarah, the Department of the Army Criminal Investigation Division has been committed to a thorough investigation to find out the facts and to find out who has been involved to hold them accountable. Due to the work of the Department of the Army Criminal Investigation Division, along with other federal agencies and the Independent Army Office of Special Trial Counsel, excuse me, let me repeat that, the Army Office of Special Trial Counsel has preferred court-martial charges against Specialist Worcester Rancy and will make the prosecution decisions in this case moving forward. The general nature of the charges against Specialist Rancy is for the murder of Sergeant Sarah Roque on October 20 and, uh, and obstructing justice in violation of Articles 118 and 131B of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. The charges are allegations at this point and Specialist Rancy is completely entitled to the full due process of law moving forward. Specialist Rancy is currently being held in pretrial confinement awaiting a preliminary hearing pursuant to Article 32 of the Uniform Code of Military Justice. The Department of the Army Criminal Investigation Division continues to investigate and updates will be provided through their office as they are available. At this time, I'm opening for questions. Chris. General Chris Brown, QA3 out of Springfield. Last week I asked you about the timeline and how we where everything played out, what the expectation was of when she was murdered, and everything like that. Do we have that updated timeline now that you brought preferred charges? So the timeline is similar to what I briefed last week um, as far as the actions the installation took, when, when she was discovered, when she was initially reported as missing, when she was discovered, and then obviously over the last roughly week or so, we've been very focused on the supporting CID as they move forward the investigation. So again, all of the details of that timeline are still part of the investigation, but the macro moves that I talked about last week are still very applicable. Do you have any um, information you can release about the relationship between these two and how this came to be at this point? So that is still part of the ongoing investigation, so I'd rather not discuss any details related to that. Mark Slavitt with KRCG, um, CBS affiliate out of Columbia, Jefferson City. My question for you is, how is the base right now? How are people dealing with this? So I appreciate that question. And the first thing I would say to you is what I said earlier or last week. Fort Leonard Wood remains a safe place to live and work. So things that we have done on the installation to ensure that, we've reinforced that through things like increasing mounted and dismounted patrols through family housing and single soldier uh, areas, living areas. As I said, yesterday the, the unit had a very touching memorial. Um, and while that does not bring closure, that is a step, a critical step in the healing of that unit and the family. Uh, the family did return to their home earlier this week, um, and they escorted Sarah, and I'm very pleased to report uh, that her hometown gave her and her parents a hero's welcome. Uh, they came out, first responders and t town residents, um, and welcomed that family back with open arms. So I think all of that is part of the healing, and it will continue. Uh, we continue to reinforce not only the unit, but all of those involved with any resources they need, whether they be chaplain support 
or anything else. Um, so I think those are all steps. And then things like increasing our, our patrols and increasing our military police presence um, and just the, the coming together as an installation. Could you update us on the canine? What happens with the canine? Now? I appreciate that question. So again, uh, and, and you can see the picture of, of Sergeant Roquet with her dog Zorro. Um, so the, the parents, before they returned to their home, they had the opportunity to meet Zorro, uh, which I think was a really good step and something they frankly asked for. So right now, Zorro will, will go into the, the military process like other military dogs that, that are separated from their handlers due to military assignments or whatever the case may be. I can't answer, answer specifically Typically what will happen with Zorro, but, but Zorro will be treated and, and moved forward in, in, as a, a critical army asset that that dog is. Hunter? Uh, Hunter Walshman with KOMU TV, the NBC affiliate in Columbia. And the news releases that uh, Fort Leonard Wood has given uh, both Specialist Rancy and Sergeant Roquet, uh, it lists them as being in the 5th Engineer Battalion. Uh, did, can you confirm that they were both in the same battalion, and do you know if they worked together at all or had any interaction? So, so they were in the same battalion. Um, as far as other interactions, um, that is part of the investigation. Um, so that, that will continue to develop over time. Daryl? Daryl Tom Marina, Plus County Daily News. First question, following up on what you had stated before about the safety of the installation. Can you confirm that the specialist is currently in custody off post? And if you can confirm that, can you state it's the Phelps County Jail, or is that somewhere you'd rather not police for security matters? So, so he is in pretrial confinement. Um, he will be moved, uh, and again, I can't say the exact timeline because I'm just not sure, um, but he will be moved to Fort Leavenworth, where he will be in pretrial confinement as the legal process continues. Following up, the 5th Engineers are a pretty large unit, about four or 500 people, so it's entirely possible that they wouldn't have any more contact more than a regular civilian company, right? So again, I can't speak to the contact that, that Specialist Rancy may have had with Sergeant Roquet. That'll be part of our discussion and our, our investigation. Uh, but the reality is, yes, that is a large unit that has a lot of missions, in the, and they're, they have a high op tempo. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Allison, did you have a question? Chris? Going back to a couple things, and for those that are not familiar with military procedure when it comes to criminal justice, can you explain what preferred charges is and then how long it may be before somebody sees an arraignment um, under how you guys handle cases like this? So I can't put a timeline on that um, because, as you well know, the, the key now, the next step will be the Article 32 hearing. Um, and then the process will be led by the Office of Special Trial Counsel integrated with the Criminal Investigation Division. So I won't hazard a guess to a timeline because what we owe Specialist Rancy, like every other soldier, is due process. And they will ensure that they've got all the facts to move forward at the appropriate time. I do want to reinforce um, how much I appreciate the enterprise support, both with CID and their external agents they have sent in, other federal agencies, as well as Special Trial Counsel support. The Army Enterprise fully, fully leveraged resources to Fort Leonard Wood, and I firmly believe that is what drove the, the expeditious and efficient execution where we will ever to prefer charges quickly. But, but what, explain what preferred charge is, because like I said, there's a lot of people that are going to see this and not understand what a preferred charge is. And okay. kind of, not really a timeline, but that process of what preferred charge is, you know, moving forward, okay. actually, is it similar to a grand jury? Is it similar to just being arraigned? You know, kind of explain that out for us. So the grand jury step is really Article 32 step. So we are at the point now where we have the information to charge him. Um, that arraignment has not happened yet. That will happen moving forward, again, led by the Office of Special Trial Counsel. Um, but we are, we are preliminary to that. What we have basically put together is enough information to confirm that we can keep Specialist Rancy in pretrial confinement and have the, the information to move that case forward. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I, I, think, I think that the confusion is, is what is a preferred charge? Does that make sense? Because if I'm arrested for something, then I, and I go in front of the judge for arraignment, that would be the, I'm held on suspicion, and then I'm charged with, and then moving forward. I think the preferred charge is what's confusing some people, what that actually means. So, try, to, try to get so I don't know if that's something. So I don't want to get too far out of my lane, yeah. um, but again, I, I will generally say that by preferred charges, we have the ability uh, and, and the, the information through the investigation that allows us 
to continue to keep Specialist Rancy in pretrial confinement. That will lead to an arraignment, that will lead to an Article 32, or as you stated, similar to a grand jury, and then the process will continue from there. Hunter? Uh, I know the investigation is ongoing. Can you say if there are any other people or a person of interest still, or where the investigation is focused, if it's been on base, or if it's led you uh, off? Off post at all. So I can't speak to many of those details. I will say that, that, again, with the Criminal Investigation Division and the other federal agencies, they have done a great job at, at looking at all aspects of the case that led us to this point. But I don't want to comment more than that based on the, the fact that it is ongoing. Okay, we have time for about one more question. General, I'm going to give you an opportunity. It's been a rough two weeks, you know, from the search to today. Um, as you sat back and dealt with this over the last two weeks, you know, how are, I, I know you're talking about the base, but let's talk about you and the two gentlemen here that have kind of been through all this, you know, how are you personally dealing with this? 2019 was the last time a homicide happened on post. It's been a while. This is not something that happens every day, um, especially within the community of the installation. So how are you handling it as the man in charge of of everything here for I appreciate that question. You asked that the last time we talked. And, and as I said then, as a leader and a commander, I, I take this personally. Um, I hold very dear that I'm responsible for what goes on in this installation. Uh, but I will tell you that, that personally what helps me um, are things like the, the very poignant um, memorial that the 5th Engineers had with our installation yesterday. The incredible support that all of us have gotten from our community. And, and just seeing leaders continue to lead from the front, to be engaged every single day in ensuring that what we do remains Army values based and reinforces um, how important this installation is to the Army and what a great place to serve it is. And the last thing I'll say, Sergeant Major and I have an opportunity to go out this afternoon to a community luncheon that we go to periodically. And one of the things we're going to say to the community is what a great place to serve this is based on how much support they give to the entire installation. Unsolicited support, and they all stepped up in spades to take care of the family, the unit, and the entire community. So, again, I'm working through this like everybody else is, um, but as the leader, we will continue to drive forward and deliver what we need to for the Army. I don't know if the last question, but do either one of you two want to respond to that question as well? Sergeant Major, Major McCabe? Well, I, uh, thank you for the question. And for what we ask is that you keep uh, Sarah's parents, Jorge and Ana Roque, and your thoughts and prayers moving forward. Uh, this is a, very, a, a tragedy that has impacted our community tremendously. And uh, she was a sister, she was a warrior, and she was a battle buddy and a member of our team. Uh, and I asked all the soldiers here that if you need help, we do have chaplains, we have behavioral health, and we have the full ACS team that can provide any assistance to uh, you at any time. And this is for our entire community. So, But we're here and we will continue to, to uh, uh, move forward, uh, but we will always keep Sergeant Sarah Emily Roque in our thoughts. Oh. So again, on behalf of the Fort Leonard Wood and the U.S. Army entirety, our thoughts and prayers continue to be with Sarah's family, friends, and fellow soldiers. Our focus remains on caring for and providing available resources to Sarah's family and unit, providing assistance to a thorough investigation into this crime, and transparency communicating to our team, to all who knew and loved Sarah, and to the public. Again, I want to reinforce moving forward. Uh, the lead agency is the Office of Special Trial Counsel, supported from an investigation perspective by the Criminal Investigation Division. We as an installation remain completely integrated in support of those organizations. Thank you all for coming today and thank you for your interest in Fort Leonard.